Hello and welcome to the Varietal Show. If you've never been here before, my name is Rory and this is a show about writing a story together. Um, there's a few ways you can participate in it. Uh, probably the most obvious one is to join in the live chat and offer up prompts or, or your own contributions or write your own stuff. Uh, because basically what we're going to do is we're going to structure, in this case using dice and cards, uh, and a solo tabletop RPG from itch.io. Um, we're going to write some journal entries from the perspective of someone diving for treasure. And uh, the goal here is to write kind of a first draft of a story or, or the start of one or develop a character a bit or something to that effect. And uh, yeah, I mean, it it's meant to be kind of for people who like writing to chill out. Put in the background if you want or join in later uh, through comments if you're not watching it live whatever you desire <clears throat> if you just want to know the results though down in the description below there will be timestamps and timestamps uh take you to certain key points of the video if you just want to know the results we come up with and so on the game we're playing tonight is called what waits beneath and i'm going to explain it a little bit um if you are not interested in that part you can jump ahead to the writing Good evening, GS. I see that you're out there. Uh, so get your, your dive suits on, because uh, this one's about going into the deep sea. Which, for me, is is fine. Uh, I, I could swim before I could walk. Uh, so I've never really had a fear of the water. But as I understand, it's a fairly common fear. And I don't know, let me know if you have that fear, <clears throat> honestly. Uh, GS says, ocean, perfect for this hot weather. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. <clears throat> All right, this is the time of the show for Lit Games. Lit Games stands for Literature Games, which is expressive games, lyric games, sol solo tabletop RPGs. There's a ton of names for them. At the end of the day, what they are is usually game devices like cards, playing cards, tarot cards, dice, to generate um, prompts. And then based on the prompts that we get, we try to put together a rough draft of a story or something. <clears throat> Pardon me. And so the one that we're playing tonight is called What Waits Beneath. And so let me explain how this one works. i zoom it in just a slight bit. So What Waits Beneath, great cover art, by the way. Did my best to color it, but I don't think it reads so well in the YouTube icon, unfortunately. Um, what the uh, what the game is about is 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 it similar in structure to the space game we played, where you sort of pull cards and get a certain amount of uh, prompt, vague prompts, and then you try to build something. But the idea is that we're diving and we're trying to find treasure, and occasionally we do, and uh, it's harrowing, and uh, sometimes it's quite easy, and we don't find treasure, and so on. Um, I'm just going to sort of skip ahead because this game is actually quite well put together. Uh, the art in this game is great, as you can surely tell. Uh, and uh, it does a pretty good job of explaining itself, which is good because it's a little complicated. I'm not going to be able to play it in its true form simply because I don't have the table space in my streaming station. And I don't have a way to stream my tabletop. That would require a second camera, a second streaming card, and probably a better computer. And I'm not going to be doing any of that. But um, luckily enough, it shows you a little bit how it works here. <clears throat> Pardon me. Um, okay. So it asks you to take regular playing cards. Like so. And it wants you, in the picture there you can see, to lay them down in a spatially consistent way. And there's a reason for this because basically what they've done is they've created go fish. Uh, they've created a prompt structure out of go fish. If you can match your um, suits, that means you find a treasure. <clears throat> but you'll notice that there's dice on top of there. Now I'm laying out two by three. I don't have space for the three by five, which I'm sure messes with the math of the game in some way, but whatever. Uh, which means 
I am going to uh, roll three d6s. And you do this ahead of time. You take your resultant d6s, like a two here and whatever, and you just sort of place them on the backs of these cards that I don't know what they are. I pulled them out of the deck at random. And um, a couple of the first two here have now have dice on them, and then the next two don't, and then one does, and then one doesn't. Uh, and basically, it's to give you a sense of exploration, I think, because there's unfound stuff here. And every time we go jump diving, we're going to flip two of these cards. Uh, the dice tells us how it went, and the cards tell us sort of what we found. <clears throat> So just to read the, uh, again, if you're not interested in the rules and you're not watching this live, feel free to use the timestamps to jump ahead to the writing or whatever else. Um, so I'm just going to briefly explain uh, some of the values here. But to be honest, I'm going to be managing most of this and then just give you the prompts. And then we'll write little short things. I don't think this will be a very long one today. Uh, okay, so the outcome of each dive attempt made on the journey is determined by flipping over any two cards with or without dice, then referencing the following tables. That's the simplest explanation of the rules. <clears throat> if you find that two cards have matching suits, so you don't have to be the same card, obviously, uh, don't have to be the same number, they do have to be the same suits. If you find that, uh, pull these cards in any associated dice out of the dive spread, which is what they call all these cards in the table, then reference the values, so you total the values up in the fates and, uh, treasure columns. Using the values to pick one prompt per column. <clears throat> oh, sorry, the first time it's the individuals, and then next add the da uh, the values of the cards there. Next add the dice values, to, if any, to recall how well or poorly the dive section went. So, what that means is we're in a full cards. The suits tell us whether we got a treasure. The values of the cards uh, get us prompts off here, our fates or treasures that we found. Um, and adding together the dice values gives us uh, whether it was what the water was like, whether it was dangerous, whatever else. And to the credit of this game, it does something that most of these games never do, which is it gives us an actual example. Um, so it shows here mismatched suits, which means, so we have a six of hearts and a two of hearts. Uh, no treasure is recovered on a mismatched suit. Uh, the cards values are six and two, which means we found a massive creature and there was a deep loss. These each had dice on them. One was a five, one was a two added together makes a seven, which gets a lukewarm water rating. Um, and that here says you were distracted and made an error is the basic prompt that that produces. And then it gives us a little entry here. Now, theirs are shorter than ours are going to be, but um, it says July 26, dive 18, based on these prompts. I found a rusty metal wind-up tool, but a whale shark bumped into me and I dropped it during my ascent. It looked like my daughter's favorite toy. I hope she finds happiness in her next life. One thing I should say is these solo tabletop RPGs, these indie games, they're very often bleak. Um, uh, that's not a bad thing. I just, I do wonder why they're always bleak. Uh, very few are anything particularly cheerful. Some of them are melancholy or surreal, but... Uh, th <clears throat> this one had matching suits, so the treasure was recovered. Uh, the card values um, gave them a shimmering coin at a moment near death. And the dice sum was one, which was terrible water. And then it says, I did it. I stole the cursed coin, but I almost lost Lucinda in the process. The old speedboat didn't let me down, though. Her engine turned back on just before the runes collapsed. So you can see a little bit. That's what we're going to do. We're going to pull these prompts. We're going to write these prompts up. And then we're going to be like, what do I think happened in my story based on these prompts? And that is... At root, what waits beneath? I think that is the quickest I've ever explained a game. Um, <laughs> it's probably still tremendously dull for most people, nonetheless. Uh, which means that we need to get to the storytelling. Now, ideally, I would have another camera and I'd say, Hey, chat, which ones do you want me to pull? But I just don't have a way to do that. And I was trying to find another way to do it. Uh, but I simply could not find a way to make this work digitally. Uh, so, um, 
Hello, Holly's house. Um, I call this one the ankle tickling stuff. What waits beneath playthrough. We're going to go on our first dive. Dive one. Uh, what's the date today? May 18th, 2023. 06.30, let's say. Uh, this one is uh, salt water only. <clears throat> okay. I'm going to pick two with dice on top. Because why not? So the first one has a dice on top of three. And the card I pulled was a four of spades. The next one I, is a five. So our total for dice will be eight. And the card I pulled is a two of spades, which means we found a treasure. We found a treasure because the suit matches. Okay, I'm gonna put those back to where they were. <coughs> Pardon me, I'm gonna have a drink of water and then we'll look at our props. Okay. I do expect it to be quiet in the chat, by the way, because it's a long weekend uh, for most people this weekend. And uh, I did actually consider just not running today, but I was like, you know, I don't know. I want to play. Okay. Um, which means that we need to go to here. And the first thing we need to resolve is what our cards tell us. <clears throat> Uh, so first of all, um, we got a treasure. So we'll be looking at the treasure row, which is cut off here, which is unfortunate, but it actually would be quite a bit of work to fix. <laughs> Ollie South says we're doing this because of your obsession with whale fall, aren't we, Rory? Maybe. You don't know me. For those who don't know, we were talking about burials and what we would prefer our bodies to do when we die. <clears throat> and I said it'd be cool to be whale fall, but I know humans can't really do that. Truthfully, I think I, I mean, I've signed up for it. Truthfully, I just give all my organs away. I do not understand hanging onto your organs into death. <laughs> We're off to a bright start. So the first value of the card was a two of spades, and the second value of a card was a four of spades. And that means the treasures are, I think actually I pick one from fate and one from treasures. One prompt per column. Oh yeah, okay, you do pick one prompt per column. Okay, uh, so that means we can pick Deep Loss or a Wanderer's Visit in the first column, guys. It's actually up to us. And the second one, we can pick a Torn ta Tapestry or a Shimmering Coin. I'm gonna pick a Torn Tapestry, but I'm curious which one, what fate you're more interested in, guys. Um, Deep loss or wanderer's visit? did some exercise today and uh it has dried out my throat when's the last time you did exercise chat and what was it gs says wanderer's visit wanderer's visit it is a wanderer's visit so our treasure is uh a torn tapestry our fates involve a wanderer's visit while we deep sea dive not sure what that's going to look like. And our conditions in the water when we dived was an eight, which is lukewarm, which is we make mistakes and learn from them. In other words, we were distracted and made an error. What caught your eye? Or you lost an item in order to get past an obstacle. What happened? Um, I'm assuming we're going to do the top one because we got a treasure. 
You were distracted and made an error. What caught your eye? Just says I walked out to the car today and does that count? I mean, it is pretty hot. It might. GS says, I'm sorry, how is there, or Holly's house rather, says, how is there a tapestry in the ocean? That is for us to figure out. How is a tapestry in the ocean? Um, you were distracted and made a mistake. What caught your eye? all right so there we go we have to write a little entry about our dive a sort of journal after our dive where we found some torn tapestry somehow maybe it was uh in a well-sealed thing maybe we found it in an underground cave uh washed up and in, in, into uh the side maybe we found a strange because we have a wanderer's visit in here a strange creature gave it to us um <clears throat> holly's house says there wouldn't be well, of course there can be um for for one um there could be a recent ship sinking or or plane crash there um there could be um it could be you know if we're gonna go more fanciful it could be in the belly of a beast uh, and so on and so forth. Um, hundred percent creativity is not constrained by the literal gold thread. Good point. GS could be gold thread. I like that. <clears throat> the next question then is what do we want to do with our wanderer? I finally found something and it is quite the find. I have been diving that bay just as gold thread doesn't disintegrate. That is correct. We're going to go with gold thread. Um, Looking for the lost golden... Oh, I'm way off the page. Sorry, guys. Second. Come on. Up he goes. Up he goes. Oh. There we go. For the lost tapestries said to be woven somewhere on the east coast uh is it the horn of africa is that what it's called the south african where you have to pass there No, Horn of Africa is the more northerly one, right? Uh, well, GS, the creature, for example, um, we need a... Uh, <clears throat> we need to address the Wanderer's visit, so the Wanderer can be a sea creature. Uh, maybe it gives it to us. <laughs> uh, it's said to be woven and was said... were said to be woven somewhere on the east coast of South Africa. Cape Hope, thank you. But a raiding ship Stole it. 
I figured that ship must have been heading east. <clears throat> and have plucked along the currents where it was shallow enough to do so. I found today the remnants <clears throat> of an old ship torn up by the shallows some ways out from Madagascar. It was long rotted and I found nothing of value really. <clears throat> Wolf eel. Let me look up a wolf eel. I don't think I've seen one before. Oh, yes, I have. I didn't know that's what those were called. <clears throat> then there was a glint. We were at the edge of midnight waters. My dive light caught a sharp yellow reflection. The telltale wink of gold. It was deeper than I had planned to go, but I couldn't resist. I swam down 20 or so meters beyond the limits I had set. In a burrow, burrowed hole, marking the steep, silty cliff. There I made my first glance and the lost tapestries of the South Sea. Even stained by deep water and a century are more of neglect. The pure gold thread still shined out. I pushed 
through the hole. That was 10 or so feet beyond my reach. It was a tricky thing to do, though. Because <clears throat> my tank couldn't fit through on my back. Well, on my back. I unbuckled it with a careless, greedy rush, in a careless, greedy rush. and slipped into the pitch black cave. It was only then when I was in The underwater cavern, well below the sun's reach, that my dive light caught the reflection of two large eyes. Let's see if I can get a sense of their eyes. I'm just looking at a picture here. Cloudy, I think, yeah. Two cloudy, large eyes. Immediately, I felt the currents in that bubble of stone shift as some great beast covered over the exit. So, um, it's an aimless wanderer, so yeah, it's probably going to protect it, but I do feel like we should, because it's more a wanderer than an enemy, I feel like we should trade something with the wolf eel. Um, like, there needs to be this sort of, maybe it's more intelligent than average moment where, like, we can give it something, and then in exchange it lets us take away the tapestry. I'm curious if anybody... Can wonder because I obviously there's no reason why the diver would have carried down like fish or something. For a long moment, suspended in the chilled waters of the deep ocean. I was caught in a stare by a great bubble-eyed monster 
with uneven gray flesh that puffed up about its every orifice. My trembling hand switched on my dive light, and there before me was the largest wolf eel, eel wolf, what is it called, wolf eel, wolf eel, I had ever seen. Its body stretched beyond my sight into the depths of the cave. They're curious, okay. Okay, I have an idea then. Something I probably should have introduced earlier, but I didn't think about this. That's what first drafts are, really. Like, uh, my favorite like quote about first drafts is Neil Gaiman uh, said that second drafts are where you take your ideas from the first draft and you make it seem like that's what you intended to do all along. And that is one thing that we don't really get to do on the stream because that'd be very tedious to do a second draft. Um, <clears throat> its teeth were sparse, cocked in every direction and fiercely sharp. I wanted to grab the old tapestry I knew the beast must have brought it here. The opening was too narrow, the currents too unfavorable for it to have gotten there by chance. GSS, 24-hour live stream of writers writing second drafts. Boy, this show, this show, I mean, it's had some high points in, in terms of viewers. For the most part, per performs lower than most, and that's kind of what I always expected because, you know, it's just, it's a dude writing, and it's either a thing you're into or you're not. Um, it's certainly not, like, obvious entertainment. But if I did a 24-hour live stream of writers writing second drafts, that would be me alone writing a second draft, which I can do without the added stress of a stream. <clears throat> For it to have gotten there by chance, no, the beast must have liked it. And now my hand was upon it. We We two wanderers of the sea, collectors of its treasures, were at an impasse. My heart could have stopped. One snap, and I would have been chum the sharks but one treasure hunter certainly can understand another
I do like your idea, GS. I think I probably, that would probably take too long for me to set up, but I do like it. GS says, wonder if we could trade something that will protect him from predatory rockfish who apparently eat these things. Um, <clears throat> but one treasure hunter can certainly, oh, what sentence, this was not the sentence I had in mind. My fingers were not following my thoughts. Can certainly understand another, can't they? Uh, Holly So says, I like that Twitch streamer that streamed himself sleeping at night, but you could pay money uh, to wake him up. There were lights and sounds, different levels. He made a lot of money. Yeah. I mean, that's one way to make money, I guess. Something that all uh, streamers will do on Twitch is they will do 24-hour streams, but they're not on 24 hours. What they do is they leave their computer running with these games that chat can interact with, and they're usually gambling. Uh, and they do okay by doing that. Um, gotta be hard on their computers, though, man. Like, like they'll, they'll have their computer running and streaming for a year. But one treasure hunter can certainly understand another, can't they? I took the coin that I had been given when my partner... sold out my business from under me leaving me only with a ratty old fishing boat none would take it was a particularly rare and most importantly shiny silver dollar I held it up in payment to the great eel before me and dropped it before its curious eyes down into the depths. With a dizzying swirl of current, it swam after it. I grasped my tapestry, paid for in full, I think, and swam for the surface. <laughs> she says there's a job opportunity for you. I'll just start doing hot tubs, hot tub streams. <clears throat> I had to lose the mask.
All right. <clears throat> ah, wow, that took way too long. <laughs> it took me like 20 minutes to do. Um, okay, well, we'll try to do a shorter one. Uh, uh, we'll draw two more cards. We'll see how far we make it. The next one is... Realize they're all the same suit. Okay, so randomly picked a King of Clubs. And then this one is a, oh, it wasn't, a Four of Diamonds. And the Four of Diamonds had a two on it. <clears throat> so let's see what that gets us. Okay, so a king and a four. A king is a moment near death. A four is a wanderer's visit, which we already did. Um, and so that kind of determines it for us. We didn't get the treasure this time, but a shimmering coin came up. Okay, well, that, I think I know how I can make that work. Um, a moment near death, a shimmering coin. And then um, our value was two, which means... Uh, Dangerous dive fraught with hazards. You lose something incredibly valuable. Oh, well, this is a story that's writing itself. Obviously, the wolf feels got to come back. And uh, steal back its tapestry. So, dive two. <clears throat> Four diamonds. King clubs. Dice two. Um, a moment near death. A shimmering coin. Muddy waters. Lose something valuable. My god, now I've done it. I didn't go back to shore. I got drunk in my boat. Anchored by a reef. Uh, Holly South says, too bad for Wolfield. Pacific octopuses are known to, well, they're not in the Pacific are known to steal their lairs. They compete for housing. Uh, I didn't go back to shore. I got drunk in my boat, anchored by Madagascar. I was still half cut. And vomiting over the side. Actually, I should clarify, in celebration of my tapestry. side when I saw a coin glimmer not too far down in the water it was a bad plan to begin with I was still drunk. My God, what was I thinking?
I knew something was off. When, as I approached the silver spot with my reserve tank only, the water began to swirl with dark silt. Soon, I was spun and lost like a riptide. In fact, I thought it was. But then, something grand and slimy rolled its body across my back. There was a shadow under the moon There was a shadow under the moonlight, or between me and the moonlight. That struck the belly of my old boat with a horrible crack. The long beast that I watched as a shadow puppet through the silt and blue moonlight. Now well, I don't need to reiterate the moonlight. Watch as a shadow puppet through the silt. twisted back and struck the boat again with another crack. I could see it rupture into planks carried on the current. It was clear that the wolf eel had not accepted the payment. <clears throat> My reserve tank ran dry and the mask sucked against my face as desperate lungs reached for air and received nothing for their effort. <clears throat> Alone, lost in the silt, and riptide of a great slimy beast. I was out of air. I couldn't even find my coin.
I'm on a board now, floating somewhere and watching the sunrise. <clears throat> I inhaled more water than a person should. My breaths are labored. So I leave this note. Don't go diving. For treasures. I don't know if I have a really good note to leave it on. The sea keeps its quarry well. Gia says this is dire. Okay. Well, we did too. Uh, I do like the prompt structure on this. Um, I think uh, it's tough to make the more complex stuff work in the... Uh, stream but I'm, I'm willing to try them we'll find a way to make them all work the more complex structures you can often do uh gs says he has to get saved i don't know i'm leaving it open these are journal entries if he gets saved he's not journaling about it <clears throat> all right which means we need to read a story Okay, if you are coming to this part of the stream, it is because you just want to hear the results. We were playing a game this week called What Waits Beneath, which is about deep sea diving for treasures. And you use dice and cards to come up with um, prompts. Uh, and then you write little entries uh, as complex or as um, simple as you really want. Obviously, I'm a writer, so I'm, I'm always going for a story and something more descriptive. But you don't have to be this complicated with it. The game itself, if you want to try it, it's a uh, pinned comment in the below. I, I have no connection to any creators of any of the games I play, but I may as well advertise small indie games. Um, I called this ankle tickling stuff <laughs> uh, before I started writing the story anyways. Uh, and our first prompt, our first dive, we did two dives. <clears throat> Uh, we got uh, four of spades and two of spades. The spades matching means we found and got a treasure. Uh, and then we got an eight, which gives us a lukewarm water condition. I finally found something, and it is quite the find. I've been diving that bay looking for the lost tapestries that were said to be woven somewhere near the Cape Hope, but were stolen by a raiding ship. My god, I figured that the ship must have been heading east, and I have been plucking along the currents where it was shallow enough <clears throat> to do so, to dive. And I had found nothing. But today, I found it finally. I found the remnants of an old ship, the right era, torn up in the shallows, some ways out from Madagascar. It was long rotted. And nothing about it had any value. However, while I was diving, I saw a glint. We were, I was down at the edge of midnight waters, but my dive light caught a sharp yellow reflection, the telltale wink of gold that all treasure hunters know. It was deeper than I had planned to go, but I couldn't resist. So I swam down 20 or so meters beyond the limits I'd set. In a burrowed hole marking the steep, silty cliff, there I made my first glance at them. It was the lost tapestries of the South Sea. Even stained by deep water and more than a century of neglect, the pure gold thread of it was still shined out. I pushed through the hole. It was ten or so feet beyond my reach, so I had to push further. 
And that was a tricky thing to do since my tank couldn't fit through well on my back. So I unbuckled it in a careless, greedy rush and slipped into the pitch black cave to reach the tapestry at last. It was only then, though, when I was in the underwater cavern well below the sun's reach that my dive light caught the reflection of two cloudy large eyes. Immediately I felt the currents in that bubble stone shift as some great beast slipped over the exit about me. For a long moment suspended in the chilled waters of the deep ocean I was caught in a stare with some great bubble-eyed monster that had uneven grey flesh puffed up about its every orifice. My trembling hands switched my dive light to its brightest setting, and there before me was the largest wolf eel I had ever seen. Its body stretched beyond my sight into the depths of the cave. Its teeth were sparse, cocked in every direction, and fiercely sharp. I wanted to grab the old tapestry and get out, but I knew the beast must have brought it here. It must have liked it. The opening was too narrow, the currents too unfavorable for it to have gotten there by chance. No, the beast must have liked it and now my hand was caught upon it we me and the beast were two wanderers of the sea collectors of its treasures and we were at an impasse my heart could have stopped one snap and i would have been chum for the sharks but one treasure hunter can certainly understand another can't they so i took the coin that had been given when my partner sold my business from out under me leaving me only with the ratty old fishing boat none would take. It was a particularly rare and most importantly shiny silver dollar. I held it up in payment to the great eel before me and dropped before its curious eyes, dropped it before its curious eyes down into the depths. With a dizzying swirl of current, it swam after it. I didn't waste time or tarry. I grabbed my tapestry, paid for in full, I thought, and swam for the surface. I had to lose the rebreather for the last 50 feet as my overextended drive left me without air, but I made it. Sick with fear, I reached the deck of my old fishing ship and rode off into the dusk with a treasure. Finally, luck was turning in my favor. Our second dive, which is connected to the first one, was a four of diamonds and a king of clubs in the dice value of two, uh, which means that things went wrong. <laughs> <clears throat> my god, now I've done it. I didn't go back to shore. I got drunk in celebration of my tapestry. I partied alone in my boat, anchored by a Madagascar. By Madagascar. <clears throat> I was still half cut, vomiting over the side when I saw a coin glimmer not too far down in the water. Still, it was a bad plan to begin with. I was still drunk. My god, what was I thinking? I knew something was off when as I approached the silver spot with my reserve tank only, the water began to swirl with dark silt. Soon I was spun and lost like a riptide. In fact, I thought it was, but then something grand and slimy rolled its body over my back. There was a shadow between me and the moonlight that struck at the belly of my old boat with a horrible crack. Causing a horrible crack? The long beast that I watched like a shadow puppet through the silt twisted back and struck the boat again with another crack. I could see my boat rupture into planks carried away on the swirling currents. It was clear that the wolf eel had not accepted my payment. My reserve tank then ran dry and the mask sucked against my face as desperate lungs reached for air and received nothing for their effort. Alone, lost in the silt and riptide of a great slimy beast, I was out of air. I couldn't even find the coin that brought me there, let alone the surface. I'm on a board now, though, of my old broken boat, floating somewhere and watching the sun rise. I inhaled more water than a person should and my breasts are labored, so I leave this note. Don't go diving for treasures. The sea, sea keeps its quarry well. That was our story. And that's what we do on The Varietal Show. Um, <clears throat> which is a ride-along. 
GS says, I see the wolf teal is triumphant in this tale. Yeah, you know, look, look I, normally I don't pull the curtain back here because, because, you know, the part, it's sort of like when you're an actor, you don't let people see you in costume when you're not on stage. Um, but I, I had this thought in my head of like, um, you know, this tapestry being a kind of symbol of uh, imperialist theft and that, you know, all who try to take it sort of face consequences and so on. All who take it knowingly, anyways. So the wolf eel I, I take to be somewhat innocent in this. It just found a shiny thing. But everyone else is a thief who thinks anything good is theirs. Um, <clears throat> and that they would somehow appreciate the value more and whatever else. And so it's my little mini commentary. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Uh, the... Uh, uh, if you enjoyed that story or if you want to write a happier ending or an even sadder ending or if you want to develop the wolf feel a character more or whatever else you can put that in the comments below i i do read the comments and respond to them and i'm always curious to see what other people come up with you don't have to be a great writer to be a writer uh you don't have to have a ton of experience or training i mean the way that you learn how to write is you just do it a lot um <clears throat> Anyways, uh, I really liked the outro from last week, so even though it doesn't fit, I'm going to use it again. Uh, and uh, thank you so much, GS, for all your prompts, and Holly's House for the ideas about the wolf eel and so on. And uh, anybody else who watches this later, have a happy long weekend. If you are uh, if one of the people that are part of this long weekend, it looks like it's going to be pretty nice. Although in, in Vancouver, it almost always rains on the may long weekend like we have this thing where leading up to the may long weekend is usually beautiful and so everyone makes ten thousand plans uh to go camping and whatever else because we got great camping in bc um but then every damn year that may weekend is always a downpour and uh not always but like way more often than it should be and so every year, it's my friends are like, we went to the main long weekend. It was really sunny going up to it. And then we had to leave on Saturday because like we were swimming in our beds. So I'll be curious to see if it just stays hot all weekend. Um, anyways, uh, enjoy your weekend. Uh, you don't have to go home, but you have to get out of my cavern. Get out of my cavern. That's my tapestry.